Today I fucked up by getting my grandma hooked on expensive fruit. This happened an hour ago. Earlier this day, I went to the local supermarket, Lidl, to buy some groceries and something for breakfast. While browsing the fruit and vegetables aisle, something came to my attention. It was a gorgeous large mango fruit, fully ripened with mostly red skin which was soft to touch. I'd seen mangoes many times before, but rarely one this ripe. One problem with mangoes in Croatia is that they aren't cheap. This one cost 12 HRK, 1, 6 euros. I still bought it as it's one of my favorite fruit. Skip forward to dinner and I decide to take the mango out of the fridge and it's perfectly chilled, I love cold fruit. I proceed to carefully cut and remove the skin which comes off faster and easier than the clothes clothes of Kim Kardashian. At that moment my 77 year old grandma walks in the kitchen. In all her life, she'd never seen a mango, let alone tried one. Still, she looks at it with a glee since it looks like a massive oval skinless peach when peeled. She asks me if she can try it and I, being a good grandson slice a big chunk and give it to her. She takes a bite out of it and is absolutely ecstatic. For those who have never tried the fruit before, it tastes like a combination of peach, carrot and pineapple with some pine aroma mixed in. Seeing she enjoyed it, I give my grandma three quarters of the fruit. He eats all in seconds and asks where it grows. I'm not sure, but say India. She then says that I should bring her one every time I go to the store and find one so ripe and tasty, no matter the cost. TL doctor I bought an expensive mango fruit which my grandma ate and now she can't get enough of it. Edit, this was my first time posting in today I fucked up and I didn't expect it to explode. Thanks for the award kind stranger. Now to clarify something. I've seen a lot of comments about how one six year isn't much which would be true for Western Europe or other wealthy countries. However, average pay in Croatia is around 700 year or less, so it can get a bit expensive if you develop a regular habit of buying mangoes. Easier and cheaper alternative is buying an unripe one for a lower price and placing it near ripe fruit like bananas apples or pears to ripen over a few weeks. TBH this is just wholesome. That's very expensive but they're delicious. My neighbor has a huge mango tree, they literally can't give them away fast enough. I really need to go over there and pick some more often. Edit, they also have a massive avocado tree. The big ones with the smooth skin. Can't blame her, mango is the number one tastiest fruit. Peach and pineapple, I agree. Mangoes are delicious, my favorite fruit. I love them both ripe and soft and young and crunchy. Not sure if you will be able to find it, but there is a seasoning mixture called tahine, pronounced tahine, that just amps the flavor of mango emo, it's a mixture of chili powder, crystallized lime juice, and salt. Last time I've been to LA, I've tried a sample of mango juice with tahine. That thing kept my eyes shut for 30 seconds lol. But it's really good too. Alfonso slash Kesar mangoes come from India and Pakistan, they are generally smaller, greener, more expensive and very seasonal, like a few weeks a year, and usually only sold by the box full, 3-6 pieces, and often only in Asian markets. You may wonder why you'd go to so much inconvenience and extra expense over the, often Brazilian, still lovely, ones with the red blush. Give them a try sometime though as they're almost entirely without any kind of grain, and are dazzlingly sweet when ripe. They're like mango on pro mode. But my tropical fruit of choice is papaya, it's only perfectly ripe for a very short time, and isn't nice either side of that window, but omg when it is. Squeeze of lime if you fancy it, but wow smile. Today I fucked up by having sex with my pillows. Okay so like most of these posts this didn't happen today. This actually happened quite a while ago when I was 17. There's a too long didn't read, at the bottom too because this is gonna be pretty long. So one night, I was in the mood to masturbate because what else do teenagers do? However, I decided that jerking off in the traditional way was too boring. It's too basic. No, I had to get creative with it. So I sat down and started brainstorming and after some time I had a genius idea. I was gonna make of a giant fleshlight. In my mind, this idea was way too good to pass up, so I began construction immediately. I took two pillars off of my bed, 
put them on top of one another on the floor. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to use this like a regular flashlight because if I held the pillows and fucked them that way there wouldn't be any pressure on my dick. Removing the entire point of this thing. Pleasure. When I put the pillows on the floor, I was trying to slide my dick into the space where the two pillows met. I noticed two things here. Firstly, the pillows cases on these pillows were too rough and secondly fucking the pillows on the floor placed them directly under me and when I thrusted my pee hole would open because I have a parabola dick and that hurt like a bitch because my mushroom tip rubbed against the top pillow. To solve that problem, I figured that moving the pillows up to dick level would fix the issue because that way I could just slide it in. Sure my pee hole might still open but at least I'd be able to work around it that way. So, I put my laundry basket underneath the pillows and that solved the problem. Now I could fuck the pillows doggy style. Solve the second problem I put a dashiki that my mom gave me as a gift in between the pillows and opened the bottom of the shirt and wrapped it around the opening. That way when I slid in my dick would be inside the shirt. This solved that problem because the dashiki was made of silk. This thing was coming along nicely. If I slid into it and used my thumbs to press down on the pillows so that they would wrap around my peter it actually felt pretty good. However, I didn't want to press my thumbs down on it so I wrapped a belt around the entry space. BTW this turned out to be useless because I still had to press down. Feel like my description of this might be oyster shit so recreated the thing with some different materials. The link for that will be under the too long didn't read. My creation was complete. Now it was doggy time. I really wanted to make love to these pillows so I took all my clothes off so it could feel more intimate. Here's where I fucked up. Normally, I would lock the door when I was doing weird shit like this, but in this case I figured that I was gonna be quick so I didn't do it. Found some porn, placed the laptop next to my bed so that it would be at eye level, got down on my knees, and started fucking. I was really getting into this thing like I was sweating and shit. I immediately regretted everything when my door burst open. Turns out my mom was doing laundry downstairs, and she decided to be kind and bring my clothes upstairs so that I could put them away. This is the first time she'd ever done this, and needless to say she never did it again. My mom opened the door to see her naked son fucking pillows from his bed while a video of May from Overwatch getting plowed by coach from Left for Dead played on his laptop. She tossed me my clothes and promptly closed the door. Sat there on my floor naked and just fucking hating myself. I regretted everything that led to that moment. When she finally did confront me about what she saw she only talked about the porn. She said something along the lines of, when did you start watching porn? And I said some dumb shit like well you know boys will be boys her. Since then she hasn't said anything about it, but I know this will pop up again because that's just how she is. At the time, this was mortifying but I find it pretty funny these days. And BTW even after she walked in I still finished. Too much work went into that to not finish in it. I had to throw the dashiki away. Too long didn't read, I'm a give it a giant flashlight using pillows and my mom caught me fucking it. She hasn't said anything about it since but I'm certain that she'll bring it up again. Link to the recreation of the giant flashlight. Edit. So in the beginning of this post I said that this happened quite a while ago and when I was 17. Some people may be confused by the quite a while ago part. That's just poor wording on my part. I'm a 2000s baby. Overwatch came out in 2016. I'm 19 now. I'll let you all do the math on that. In 20 years when you introduce your fiancé to your mother, you know exactly what will happen. It's better than a coconut. Thanks for bringing back that terrible memory. Wish I could unread it. Jay, I literally only clicked this post to scan the comments for this ha ha ha. I once walked into the basement when one of my sons was busy. I said, oops, turned away and left. I didn't think I could just leave the elephant in the room. So later I said, there was a study done in Germany that proved that regular ejaculation diminishes violent tendencies in young males, so go for it, but somewhere where you won't be embarrassed. This was true, but it was years ago, so I can't link it. Dot. Hope your mom understands how normal it is. Don't be embarrassed. Oh god, I think my dad saying that would be worse than never mentioning it. Today I fucked up by using the family vibrator, NSFW.
This didn't happen today. It happened many moons ago in 1995. I've debated telling this story for four to five years, ever since I first discovered Reddit and the land of people fucking up in glorious fashion. I used to always stumble into the memory when sex stuff wasn't allowed on today I fucked up, then forget about it by the time the weekend rolled around. Today is the day. I swore I'd take this shit to the grave, but you guys won't tell anyone and this is a throwaway for the most obvious reasons on our planet. Before half of you were probably even born. 1995. I was 15. Windows 95 was replacing Windows 3. 1. I didn't know anyone with the internet, much less have it myself. We had 14. 4KB's modems and bulletin boards, BBS, that you could dial into once your parents were asleep. My friends and I trade did three five floppy disks with one single porn image on them and it took forever to load it longer to download and it was way too scary to keep those on the family computer the only video porn i had seen in my life was a couple of old vhs tapes that my friend had of his parents having sex yes i know don't just don't the one thing i did have my jizz covered prized possession, was an old sex toy magazine that I found in my dad's closet. They had a few pictures of naked ladies in there and it was glorious. What it also had was a picture of this, a strange device had been floating around my house longer than I had been alive. I remembered it being in my mom's nightstand when I was in elementary school. After we moved to the new house, it ended up in my dad's dresser. He used it to massage his back sometimes. I truly had no idea what it really was, until I saw it in that sex toy magazine. They labeled the items and cup on the far left side of the picture. It was labeled penis cup and my imagination went wild. I thought about it for a few months before I finally ended up in the house alone and had a chance to go get the old family vibrator from my dad's dresser. If I told you it was glorious, that would be an understatement. I couldn't stand putting my magic johns in it, cause it was too strong and I was too sensitive, but I could certainly rub that cup all over my winky dinky and blow huge loads. I became addicted in an instant. It was the best feeling in the world. It was better than letting the jets in the pool blast my junk, which was the closest thing to a girlfriend I had before I proposed marriage and committed my life to the family vibrator. Here's the fuck up. I was obsessed with that thing. Every single time my parents were out of the house, I was going to pound town with the family vibrator. I busted my nut, cleaned it up, and put it back where it was supposed to be. Until the day my dad came home early. He walked down the hallway, turned the corner, and saw his baby boy on the floor making sweet love to the family vibrator. We made eye contact and I died inside. I quickly covered my wild stallion, turned 50 shades of red, and he walked away. All I could do was get dressed and put it back where I found it. He just kind of looked at me with those disapproving fatherly eyes when I finally got the courage to walk into the living room and my only response was, I don't do it much. He didn't respond. We never spoke of it again. Would have much rather been blasting some incest porn. Too long didn't read, I used a 1950s sex toy on my penis. My dad walked in. But don't make me admit the truth guys. My parents had one. I would put that in my forehead with the suction cup attachment, and my parents would laugh. Just realized why. Ha ha. Our son stuck our penis cup to his forehead. That's hilarious. It, a word. I was digging through old stuff with my wife and she pulled one of these out and said it has been in her family since she was little, we're both in our late twenties now, we both thought it was just some weird massager. After reading this we are both laughing our heads off. I don't know who to trust anymore. Depends on where she massaged you with it. At least he did not walk in on you fucking his plush leather sofa. Our family also had one of these bad boys. My mom claimed it was a massager, which I used it as such a few times. Once I got older, I thought I was so smart when I found what else it could be used to massage. I distinctly remember the sound it would make while using the penis cup as you called it, once the pre-cum started to build up, kind of a splattery vibration. It wasn't till I was an adult that I realized that we were probably all sharing a communal sex toy. I'm glad I'm not alone in the family vibrator game. God, that glurp bus was heaven though wasn't it?